Good morning, everybody. How y'all doing today? Doing well, right? Doing well, right? I'm so glad you all came this morning. Uh, there are a couple of things I would like to discuss with you all this morning. One of them is, uh, I mean, there are, there are people out there who are having physical challenges. Uh, I'm going to go in prayer for them. Right now, I can remember when I had some physical challenges, and you know, the Bible says that we should lay hands on the sick, and the sick shall recover. That means go through a recovery process. Uh, the recovery process could be an instant miracle, or it could be um, a long-term process. I had to go through some kind of process like that years ago. When I had major throat surgery. It took a whole bunch of stuff. It took me a good month to recover. My wife, just a few years ago, she had major neck surgery. It took her uh, two months. There you go, two months to recover. And it's, it's a challenge. I mean, but it's a challenge. But people are going through that, and we need to constantly be in prayer for those people. You know, for God to literally lift their spirits, lift their hearts. You know, so they can find hope and peace while they're recovering. Because you know, the, the body, the body it, it, it is going to get sick at some point in time. At some point in time. Yeah, and I think everybody, everybody, I, I haven't met a person yet that the body don't get sick. It could be through your ignorance, or it can just be through, you know, as your body get older, begins to diminish in process. I can remember reading the scripture in the book of Exodus. Uh, not Exodus. In the book of uh, Numbers. Numbers when no, Numbers of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. Moses had died. Moses finna grand died. And the Bible says that he was 125 years old. And his eyesight had not diminished. Eyesight had not diminished. You know, that kind of, that's 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 the grace of God. You know, to go that long, and you, the eyesight still be strong. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, all of us go through physical challenges. All of us, all of us, all of us. So, we won't, we're going to believe, we're going to trust God right now. We're going to go to the Father and just going to pray for that, that God and continues to encourage those people uh, so that their hearts can be lifted in the time of their challenge. So, right now. Father God, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God, for your love and your compassion. We thank you, Father God, for your healing. You said in your word that you sent your word and you healed us. You said by Jesus stripes we were healed. Past tense. Our spirit is already healed, Father God. And we believe that your word will heal our flesh. You said we serve thee that you will bless our water and our bread. Bless our water and our bread. And you will take sickness and disease away from the midst of us. And we believe, Father God, as we lay hands on the sick, Father God, which we've already done, we believe, Father God, that you're going to uplift their hearts and take them through the recovery process, Father God. And they'll come out of it with flying colors. And they'll praise and glorify you through it, as well as on the back end of it, for the healing that's already been manifested in our spirits. We thank you, Father God. We love you and we appreciate you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Now, the second the second thing I want to uh, talk to you all about today, and it's going to be involved in the teaching. We've been teaching on spiritual things for quite some time now, and I want to take you all to the book of James, to the book of James. I'm going to do, well, yeah, go to the book of James. Go to the book of James. Uh, there are a lot of us in today's society who actually say in our minds, our hearts, I'm not our hearts, we say with our mouths, I believe, I believe, I believe. Have y'all ever ran across somebody just say, I believe in God? 
but then when you take a step back and you look at how they're living, you're not judging a person. You're not judging them. Please do not hear me say that we're, you're judging somebody. If you hear me say that, you're missing the whole point. It's almost kind of sad that I even got to say that because that's what a lot of people do. They analyze, we do analytics, <laughs> and try to decipher what somebody is saying. That's why I'm a straightforward person. When I, whatever I say, that's what I meant. I just come right on out and say it. Got time to be playing these Bush Week games. And y'all know Bush Week? Oh, stop. Just come right on out and say it. But uh, you can step back and you can look at somebody and you can see that they really truly don't believe. Because if they believe, you'll see it in their actions. You'll see it in their, their, the words that they speak. If they really believe in God, you'll see it. So, with that being said, James. Chapter 2. Y'all there? Mm -hmm. Verse 1. My brother, have not the faith of our Lord. Oh, goodness gracious. What? My brother, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ. What? What are you with me, Paul? What are you talking about? I mean, John, Jane, what are you talking about? So it said, my brother, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons. I gotta finish the verse. <laughs> with respect of persons. He's in, in this one simple verse, he's saying, <laughs> have not the faith. God does not respect people just based on people. He respects people based on their faith. Okay. I'm, I'm going to go read it out of the Good News Version so you all can get, get a different meaning, or get, a, get a different picture of it. Because King James, it's good, don't get me wrong, King James is really good. But I like to take other go use other translation. And you gotta be real careful with other translations too. Because other translations will twist or it'll be people's points of views and you'll totally lose the meaning of certain uh, scriptures. But James chapter one, look what it says. My brother, pay no several regard to people. Show no prejudice nor partiality. Do not attempt to hold, I'm just amplified, I'm sorry. Do not attempt to hold and practice the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, together with snobbery. <laughs> with snobbery. <laughs> okay, y'all know what a snob is? Okay, okay. Let's, let's, let's catch out there. The whole point is this. If you see people who say they believe, you should see some form of action with it. You should see it. Jesus even goes out on another level. And when he says, he says, he said, you'll know them by their fruits, by their actions. The ones that truly believe. The ones that truly believe. Verse 2. <clears throat> it says, for if there come unto your assembly, a man with a gold ring and godly, godly apparel, goodly apparel. And there come in also a poor man in bell raiment. And ye have respect to him that wear the uh, gay clothing, and, and where I most does mean gay, it means happy clothing. That, that, mean, that word gay means happy. Don't get all funny acting on me. <laughs> wear the, the gay clothing and say unto him, Sit thou here in a good place, and say to the poor, Stand thou there, or sit under my footstool. Notice what you just did. Notice what people do. do. They'll see somebody who's dressed really very, very respectful. They have you no know, clean suit, cut, you no know, clean cut, tall, dark, handsome, 
you know, clean shade. That person right there, but then you take this person over here, who may look like uh, one of the uh, bush, uh, bushwhackers. Y'all remember the wrestlers, the bushwhackers? Come out, tattoos all in their face, beard all, and then look all kind of crusty looking. They all did this all the time. And they walk like this. Okay, so y'all know what I'm talking about. There's, there's, it's called the bushwhackers. Them boys are crazy wrestling. <laughs> but if they look like that. He say, you take them. A person who actually truly believes they're going to treat both of them on the same playing field regardless of how they dress. Maybe a little weird <laughs> when you see certain things. Like it's a lot of stuff nowadays. I see people do stuff to their physical bodies and I'm wondering in my head like, okay, you have to almost catch your facial expressions and I, I've gotten much better than nowadays. I'm just straight face. <laughs> you don't, you don't, do, don't, don't say nothing. <laughs> but if you're going to treat this person who's goodly dressed and this person who may have some raggedy clothes and you treat them differently, he said, your belief, watch this, I'm going to go off and finish short to you. He said, what did he say? Verse 3, and ye have respect to him. Okay, now verse 4. He said, are ye not then partial in yourselves and become judges of evil thoughts? Come judge of evil thoughts. He's he said, you trying to judge the thought process of that individual. Watch this. Watch this. Hearken, my beloved brother, have not God chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom which have which he hath promised to them that love him. Now stop. Now I want y'all to think, look at that word poor. Look at that word poor. That does not mean, I've heard people take that word poor and they have tried to diminish it and say that the person doesn't have sufficiency. They don't have enough money. They don't have enough clothes. They don't have enough food. That's not what that poor means. That word poor here, if you look it up, it means to be humble in spirit. Just like um, I heard somebody say this the other day, and it was kind of ironic. The question was this. Why is it that some of the most richest people in the world, when you see them, most of the time you don't even know that they're really, really, really rich because of the way they dress? Was that boy, uh, boy that who created Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg? If you watch the way he dressed, he always had flip flops on and jeans and a regular old t-shirt. And he's a multi, multi, multi billionaire. And I'm thinking in my head like, well, shouldn't you have a suit on? He don't want to wear a suit. He want to wear a regular t-shirt with some jeans. Like me, that's the way you sit, some of y'all, you a preacher. Why you always wearing muscle shirts and, and wearing shorts? It's a thousand degrees outside. It's hot. I don't care less about what you. Th <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I ain't worried about you. <laughs> if you're trying to judge my thought process, he said you're being partial. Your, your faith. Well, I ain't, I ain't gonna say that. I'm gonna say that yet. I'll finish the second time. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say your faith. Let's read it on. Let's read on. He said, so this person is humble. That's what the word poor of this world. The humble people and rich in faith rich in faith. Watch this. But verse 6. But ye have despised the poor. Do not do not rich men oppress you and draw you before the judgment seats. Now this word rich, it doesn't mean somebody who has more than enough. This word rich, it means greedy. This word rich, it means greedy. Look it up. The reason why you tell me because uh, me, I'm rich. I have in my and the word rich itself, it just means sufficient. I mean more than you can handle. And I, I got, I mean I'm not broke. I mean I, I got plenty of stuff. I got so much stuff. We got stuff that we don't even get. We sit on our shelves at the house and we don't even use it for three months, and it's just there. 
I mean, I'm like me, my wife, and we we try to go through the house, just get rid of stuff. Get 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 no get get no 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 get rid of it. You ever go to somebody's house and they got all the knickknacks and stuff all over the walls and everything? Boy, I said, no, get rid of that stuff. It's, it's too much to dust. And it seems like every time we get rid of some stuff, we end up getting more stuff. I'm like, where did all more stuff come from? <laughs> it just shows up. Me. <laughs> it just shows up. So this word rich is referring to somebody who's greedy. Just like in this country, capitalism, it used to be a good thing to where people can make extra money off of it. Now you can just see the greed all in it. You charge somebody 35% interest. That's greedy. You charge somebody 37, uh, 28% interest. That's greed. You go buy you go buy a house and the house is 19% interest rate. That's greedy. The house is $100,000 and you got to pay 19% interest at, uh, every year throughout the course of a 15 or 30 year mortgage. That's greed. Downright greed. And even when it comes to buying vehicles and you charge 22, 19% interest rate. That's greed. That's why he says right here, he says, he says, but ye have this, despise, but ye have despised the poor. Question, do not rich men oppress you? and draw ye before the judgment seats. What's the judgment seats? If you don't pay these folk your money, they're going to take you to court. They're going to take you to court. And you letting these greedy folk, that's my reason why, I mean, we, we got, me and my wife, we paying off some debt now, and we trying to get some stuff taken care of, yada, yada. Everybody has those kind of challenges at some point in time throughout the course of their life. But, to go out and say, I'm gonna get this fifteen hundred dollar credit card limit credit card and this fifteen hundred dollar dollars credit and I charge it to the max and now you're paying twenty eight percent interest rate on this one credit card and now you can't pay it back. You was foolish enough to allow them people to get you a caught off in debt. And when everybody's done I mean, everybody in my generation has done that. Everybody in my generation done that. Now you see the younger ones coming up and you try to teach them principles so that they don't get caught up in the same thing you get caught up in. You get caught up in. What's this got to do with somebody's faith? Let's read on. Let's keep on reading. He said, Do not they blaspheme that worthy name by the which ye are called? Hold on. Blaspheme that worthy name. What's that worthy name? Jesus the Christ. He's talking about the world system. Don't they? Don't you? Don't people make fun of you because you call yourself a Christian? If somebody ain't made fun of you yet because you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, <laughs> yeah, keep, keep living because you they will. I'm not a Bible thumper. Well, I thank God I am. But I don't believe that I'm holier than thou. I don't either. I'm only believing I'm holy as Jesus Christ has made me holy. I believe I'm holier than you. If you think I'm you think that I think that I'm better than you, then you really missing the blood of Christ. You really missing the grace of God. So this is available to you too. So watch this, watch this. If ye if ye fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, ye do well. The law. He noticed how he went back to the law of one of the Ten Commandments. Uh, you know, if you if you love somebody the same way they love you, he said, what did he say? You do well. But that the law up under the Old Testament, it had too much wiggle room because some people, the way they love, how many of you all know they will mistreat themselves? I'm going to say it again. Some of y'all, you mistreat yourself. Please take Chantix. Take Chantix and it'll help you get out cigarettes. Now you're addicted to Chantix and you're spending more money on the Chantix than you are the cigarettes. You are the cigarettes. And the Chantix could stop your heart. Just like the cigarettes could. You, you still mistreating yourself by doing both of them. How come you just can't grab hold of the Word of God and then God make you free from both? Free from all of them. See, the world still gets trying to get you caught up. You you seen it, you caught, you see yourself.
you don't even realize that you're mistreating yourself. Don't you realize who you are in Christ Jesus? You ain't figured that out by now, who you are in Christ Jesus. Why would you mistreat yourself? You live in fear. Okay, I don't want to touch all that. I don't touch all that. Let's read on. Let's read on. Look what it says. But if ye have respect to persons, ye commit sin and are convinced of the law as transgression. The word transgress means to go against. To go against. For whosoever shall, for whosoever shall keep. The whole law, and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all of it. If you if you disobey God's word in one area, if you disobey the law upon the old covenant, if you disobey the law upon the old covenant in one area, God says you're guilty of all of it. So now I got to say, okay, if I'm a real believer. I don't want to be known as one of those religious folks. Because that's what, that, personally, that's what it boils down to. Somebody who's religious. If you just, you religious, you say, I believe, I believe. And I don't see any kind of action behind it. I don't see any kind of real truth behind it. I don't see any, you know, it's just like, why is it that you just keep pushing and keep pushing and keep pushing? You know, hope. It's, it's hope. No, the Bible tells you hope against hope. Hoping against hope. You just keep believing. Even though you don't really see in the natural any real reason why you should keep believing. That's hoping against hope. You have to, people need to be able to see that. That's why he goes on to say this. Well, look what it says here. He says, verse 11, For he that said, Do not commit adultery, is the same person who said, do not kill. That's what I like to say. Say it also. I want to say say it also in y'all Bible. It's the same person who said, do not kill. Now, if thou commit if thou commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the whole law. Think about it. You ain't never slept with another man or another woman outside of wedlock. From me. Uh, or they, they married or you married and you commit adultery. You ain't never done that, but you go pop a cap in this person's head over here. He's God says you just as guilty as, as a person who committed adultery. As soon as God sees it on the same playing field. Sometimes that in this society, in our world, and it's been like that for a while now, we try to say somebody who murdered somebody is worse than the person who committed adultery. Because if they commit adultery, they just go get a divorce. They committed some kind of, you know, civil immoral act. Well, this guy says the same thing. It's the same thing. You're going to kill somebody. And and I, just like I'm saying this right now, and some of y'all looking at me like, huh? God sees it on the same playing field. Just like when that guy would go back up at the top. The person who was dressed in the nice clothing and the person who was not dressed in nice clothing. And you treated the person with, with goodly clothing better than you treated the person over here with, um, with, uh, with some torn or raggedy jeans. And personally, especially today's society, they make the clothes at $75 a pop with raggedy clothes. And they charge you for it. Like, we did that stuff. You threw that clothes away. You go get a fake patch, try to patch it up, or you sew it up, and you throw them in, or you throw them away. No, they ragged now. We throw them away. Now they sell them with holes in them. I ain't never got a fake coat with holes in them, except for some drawers. Got two holes with the legs, a hole at the top, and a hole up in the front. That's for men. <laughs> That's for men. Never buying no hole, no hole in it. Anyway, <laughs> look what he said, uh, verse verse twelve. So speak ye, and so do as they that shall not be judged by the law of liberty. What the law of liberty? There's a law of liberty. There's a law of freedom. Let's go find out what this is. For he shall have judgment without mercy that have shown no mercy, and mercy rejoices against judgment. How many of y'all have you seen these? I'm almost beginning to think that they're stupid, literally. They have the statement, uh, the, the stuff on the t-shirts, only God can judge me. That's a dumb shirt. Because personally, I don't want God to judge me. 
Y'all, some of y'all don't know. God's judgment is harsh. That's why he put the judgment on Jesus. Because judgment, the Bible said, for the wages of sin is what? Some of y'all said it, some of y'all whispered it. Death. Die. Go straight to hell. Period. Done. That's God's judgment. I don't want God to judge me. That's why I believe on Jesus. The Bible says, if you believe on Jesus, thou shalt be saved. Saved from what? The judgment. Because God put the judgment on Jesus. I'm probably going to be one of the first people you'll ever hear say that. Those t-shirts, I'm beginning to really think that they're stupid. It's, it's or just flat out ignorance of the people. And I'm perfect. And, and sad thing about it is, it makes me wonder, because I don't really know where they came from. I'm beginning to wonder if some believer in Jesus Christ came up with that idea just to make some money. And maybe they made some money off of it. That's the prosperity of God. Someone may, I don't really know. I'm just, just, just throwing some stuff out there. Just my own personal opinion. Can't find in scripture, but just my own personal opinion. They might have made millions of dollars off of it, but only God can judge me. I don't want God to judge me. I don't. I don't. His judgment is too harsh. It's too harsh. That's why he judged Jesus. He says, Jesus, I'm coming after you. Because you standing in the gap for them. Okay. Now I'm saying, moving on. That's why he said, look what he said. Verse 14. Here you go. Let's go find out what this law of liberty is. What doth it profit, my brother, that a man say, he hath faith and have not works? Can, can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked, and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding you give them though not those things which are needful to the body, what does it profit? Even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. Dead being alone. Dead being alone. If your actions do not back up what you say out your mouth, your faith is dead. That's religion at a heartbeat. That's religion at its heart right there. It's a bunch of people bumping their gums and they know you don't see any kind of actions behind it. I believe in God. I believe in God. I ain't no problem with having a cocktail from time to time. I believe in God. And every woman or guy walk back, mm-hmm, love to give me some of that. I believe in God. Blank, blank, blank you. Cuss, cuss, cuss. La, la, la. Cheat, cheat, cheat. Still, still, still. You don't have any kind of action behind it. But you're a believer. You more religious than the people who go to church all the time or read the Bible all the time and try to implement it into their life. You read this Bible and you implement it to your life. See, that's not even religion. That's so called a relationship. It's called a relationship. See, the Bible tells us <coughs> that God knew us before we entered into our mother's womb. Now, if God knew us, that means he was intimate with us. If he knows me down to the heart of my core, in a relationship, since he already knows me, don't you need to be trying to find out about your partner? That's why like a husband and wife, you grow together, you start learning each other. You learn each other. You learn each other. She learns you and he learns her. Or he learns her. I know what a hug is. You know what a hug is? <laughs> you, they learn each other. They learn each other. That's called relationship. God already knows you. He already knows you. So you need to be learning him. That's relationship. That's not religious. That's a relationship. That's not religious. 
That's a relationship. That's not religious. So he says, what does it profit, my brother? You see somebody who needs something, and they have a real struggle. We ain't talking about these jokers that sat on the side of the street. Please feed me. We'll work for food. All right, I got a job for you. Why don't you just give me the money and I, I, I can go get my own job? No, you just want me to give me your, you want me to get my money. You don't want to really work. You don't really want to work. Now, if God says, I need you to do this right there, then you step out and do it. But at the end of the day, I'm going to obey scripture. Scripture says, if a man don't work, a man shouldn't eat. Don't give them nothing. I ain't giving you lazy jokers nothing. Giving you jack. Somebody come up and ask you for certain things. And then you say, Spirit of God, I need your help here. Should I do this? Should I do this? If God say, yeah, go ahead and do it, then you do it. But if you don't sense the Spirit of God saying do it, you don't give them nothing. But if you see people really, really having a hard time, and you know those ones that's really having a hard time. And, and it's like, if they don't get your help or some help, they're going to they gonna end up on the street. <clears throat> or they're going to end up losing their job. Some of you all, you all have lost jobs out there because you don't know how to control this thing right here. And somebody who see that, they might not even really know you. And if they, even if they say, hey, Ivory, you need, you, need, you need to watch your mouth. You need to watch your mouth. Because if you don't, they're going to fire you. And my wife told me that years ago. I'm like, I'm black and black. Stop black and black. Let none of them black, black, black. I had them losing that job, too. <laughs> a long time ago. A long, long time ago. <laughs> you don't get caught up in that. I had another person come in. He pulled me in the audience. He said, I, I like you. But if you don't watch your mouth, I'm going to fire you. <laughs> watch your mouth. You know, that he was, they was giving me what I needed. Why? To help me get some self-control. Even to feel some advice. That's why he said, look what he said right now. He said, what other prophet said, verse 15, if a brother or a sister be naked and destitute of daily food, naked of daily food, and one of you say unto them, depart in peace, be ye warned, and then you don't give them some food, did that even help them? That means does it profit them? Did it even help them? Be ye warned. No, by, no. my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Did you give them what they needed? <laughs> no. All you did was preach some kind of some religious quote to them. No, you took God's word, which is powerful and strong, and it can benefit the person, but you use it as a punchline. You use it as a quote to help lift their spirits. But you didn't give them what they needed. Watch this. It gets even, gets even better right here. He says, um, verse 17 again, even so faith, if it have not works, is dead, being alone. Yea, a man say, thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I'll show thee my faith by my works. Show me your faith. Now here's the here, here you go. Here's the catch line right here. Here's the catcher. Here's the catcher. Talking about spiritual things now. Here you go. Show me you believe just by bumping your gums. And I'll show you that I believe by what you see me do. Are you trying to compare or not? No, I'm not trying to compare. I'm not trying to compare me to you. I'm trying to get you to step your game up. You say you believe in God, but I can't see it in your life. You're struggling every day. Every time, every, every whim that goes by, you get mad at everything, but you say you believe. Somebody needs your help, and you don't even want to help them. Oh, goodness gracious. Watch this. Paul says, verse 19, here it go. It is good right here. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. <laughs> but the devils believe also, and they stand to God. He know what he's saying right now. 
the devils also believe in trouble. That word devils mean demons because there's only one devil, one nutcracker, one, who's in charge of a bunch of little bitty demonic forces. But they all, all these little demons, God is going to wipe all of them out. He said, he said, the devil, now the devil himself, the devil himself, this, some of y'all probably never even heard of this one. The devil himself, Satan, the Antichrist, whatever name you want to give him, whatever name he has, the, 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 the great red dragon, okay, him. He ain't scared of God. The little bitty demons are. That's why it says the devils also believe and they tremble. They're scared. Satan himself ain't scared. Anybody who can walk up into heaven and start a riot <laughs> ain't scared of God. And he ain't scared. Of Satan is not, Lucifer is not afraid of God. He's not afraid of Jesus because he went right off. In, when Jesus was being tempted, he went, think about it, you go to Jesus and you tempt Jesus. <laughs> you ain't scared. You trick some of the angels in heaven, deceive them, and to get them to come fight against God. Think about you. Hey, 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 Michael, come here. Now, Michael didn't fall, but Michael, come here. He probably thinks Satan probably even tried to tempt Michael. I mean, he knew he wasn't going to get Michael or Gabriel or the angel of the Lord. He could get all these other angels. Hey, come here, come here. Come here, come here, come here, come here. We're going to start a mutiny me up in this camp. We're going to take off a God's throne. I'm going to sit up. You're going to worship me. I can get this thing done. Watch, watch, watch. Really? You can do it? We ain't got to submit to that man anymore? No, he ain't got to do that no more. And, 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 and tricks him up. That, no, I ain't going to <laughs> He said, you believe well. You do us a good thing to believe that there is one God. Good thing. But the devil, you on the same playing field as all the demons. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith with our works is dead. Action must precede your faith. Action. So now, I'm not saying that you got to come up with the actions. You go to God's word. Father God, show me what I need to be doing. Spirit of God will I'll start functioning you from right in here. You'll see the storylines. Oh, Paul did this. Oh, yeah, James did that. Oh, yeah, Moses did this. Oh, yeah, Jesus. Oh, yeah, he did that. He laid down his life for his friends. Hold on, hold on. I ain't letting nobody take advantage of me. Jesus laid down his life. You lay down your life. When you start laying down your life, when you start giving up what you think you should have. What you no. <sighs> Tidy folk calling me. You lay down your life for your friends. Only time somebody could ever run over you is when you allow them to. But if you're doing it from God, from from think about it. People run over Jesus. They think they run over Jesus. Jesus gave up his life for all of mankind. For every man, woman, boy, or girl to even have an opportunity to receive him as their Lord. So, with that being said, with that being said, we got to see Jesus as a main example of a person who actually walked by faith. Who actually walked by faith. We have to actually see that. Glory to God, man. That's some good stuff right there. That's some good stuff right there. We actually see God's, or see Jesus as the example, laying down his life for all of mankind. And that's how we should be living our lives. People need to see this work. But they need to see this manifestation of God's goodness in you. How they see it? By what you do in reciprocation of this, I mean, to them. Glory to God. Hey, we'll be right back.